You're about to meet three Iraq war heroes who have paid an extreme price to serve their country. Marine Sergeant Ty Ziegel, Army Major Tammy Duckworth, and Army Sergeant Garrett Anderson. True patriots who have served with dignity and honor. But you'll be shocked to learn that these wounded warriors are being failed by their own government, by a broken bureaucracy that let them down when they returned from war. You'll be outraged, as I was, to learn that they've had to wage war on the VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs. A backyard cookout at the Ziegel family home in Metamora, Illinois. A final family meal before saying goodbye. I have um, pictures of your brother packing, and now I'm taking pictures of you packing. 22-year-old Zach Ziegel deploys tonight. For Zach's parents, sending a son off to war is all too familiar. Zach's big brother, Ty, served two tours in Iraq as a Marine sergeant. His family remembers sending off their first son three years ago. Oh, it was tough. We were at the reserve center, and they had done formation. And the buses had pulled up, and they said, go hug your families. And he stepped up onto the curb. And I looked in his eyes, and I knew. That little voice that talks to you sometimes, that he'll never be the same. A couple days before Christmas 2004, Ty Ziegel got hit by a suicide bomber. And this is Ty Ziegel today. It's just, it's just all, yeah, it's all one big scar, pretty much. The guy sitting right here next to me uh, went into the fire, pulled me out of the fire, put me out on the ground, and I guess whatever fuel or it was so hot, I kept reigniting on fire. So he put me out and then put me out one or two or three times or whatever. From dressing in camos as kids yeah. to getting tattoos as Marines. Zach and Ty are more than just brothers. They're best friends. Zach didn't sign up to fight without first asking for Ty's blessing. That's what I'm saying. You gonna go? I was like, I think so. He's like, cool. I told him to go. I told him he needed to do it. Would you go back? Yeah. You'd go back to Iraq? Mm-hmm. If I could still hold my gun and pull the trigger, I'd go. Brothers ready to step in the line of fire for their country. That's the way the Zeagles are built. And Zach leaves behind his fiance, proposing just before shipping out, just like his brother did three years ago. Flowers kept coming, and they'd each say, like, I love you, or happy birthday. And then the last one was Renee Nicole Klein, will you? And then he came over. And I got down on a knee and gave her a box that had a piece of paper that said I owed her an engagement ring. <laughs> But Ty and Renee's wedding would have to wait. Ty was in a fight for his life. The day after getting hit, he was rushed to Brook Army Medical Center in Texas. They wanted me to die in America, is basically why I got back so fast. So they, they, they didn't have, doesn't sound very optimistic. No, not at all. With enough clothes for a week, Ty's mom and Renee left home to be by his side. We'd walk in there and they'd, the nurses would tell us, if if it makes it through today, it's a good day. If it makes it tonight, it's a good night. They stayed for nearly two years as doctors pieced Ty's shattered body back together again. This model shows the large portion of his skull and part of his brain that had to be removed. And on top of that... A few breaks in my jaw. I've got holes from shrapnel, five, six, seven holes throughout my face here. Burns, neck, face, and head. This left arm ended up having to amputate first, middle, finger, and my thumb. And I later got my big toe put on there for my thumb. 
After rescheduling their wedding three times, Ty and Renee were finally married on October 7th, 2006, the day captured here in People Magazine. Yeah, see. Ty and Renee, now newlyweds, spent their first months living off his military retirement, about $1,200 a month, and the money Renee made from her part-time bartending job. All along, they expected the VA to follow up with a higher monthly disability check. I'm not expecting to live in the life of luxury. That's, I'm not asking that from the VA, but I, I do want, I am asking them to make it comfortable for me to raise a family and not have to struggle. Last April, a check from the U.S. Treasury appeared in the mail. No explanation attached. The Zegals called the VA for answers. Several phone calls later, a letter arrived detailing each injury with a rating from zero to 100%. When I started reading the first line, it was like, ooh, this isn't good. And every line, the disabilities decreased in percentage of disability. From facial disfigurement rated at 80% to head trauma at a shocking 10%, and his left lobe brain injury, right eye blindness, and jaw fracture listed at zero percent. That's right, zero percent. With these VA ratings, Ty's monthly compensation was just under $2,700 a month. Nowhere near the $4,000 Ty expected. Are you outraged? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got, a, I've got a pretty long fuse. I don't get too mad about too many things, but once we've been getting into this, uh, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to be down the White House door if I need to. Our own investigation found that in 2006, Ty's home state of Illinois ranked 44th out of 50 states with an average disability compensation of $8,357 a year. New Mexico had the highest at $12,891. The VA's internal reports obtained by CNN reveal the potential for persistent regional differences and rating decisions that often call for subjective judgments. Yeah. Ty's father, Jeff, started making yeah. phone calls to the office of then-VA Secretary Jim Nicholson in Washington. Go Google Ty's name. I said, you might see a picture of him, and you'll see the guy I'm talking about, my son. And the secretary's office called back, promising significant changes. Still, the Zegals had no idea what that meant. For now, Ty's life is on hold. He took us to the place where he one day hopes to build a home. You can't be building a house with no money, uh, you know, obviously. So we need to get, we need, I need to make sure that all that's done and over with and ready and we're comfortable before I, I ever put a shovel in the dirt out here. Next, Ty takes his outrage to the nation's capital. Every person that runs all these buildings here should be ashamed. 